Hi, my name's Nina. Um, there have been several well-publicised failures in social services in recent years. I've worked with young people at risk of offending in Brixton and made many social services referrals um, for families that are in need of support because children are being neglected as a result of chaotic lifestyles. Uh, but due to high caseloads, no action was taken to prevent this from happening until the young person in the family had offended and the youth offending team got involved. Uh, how would uh, how, how reform social services to ensure that they're more effective at preventing uh, young people from becoming involved in the criminal justice system? I remember going to visit a, a school in Oxfordshire and talking to the head teacher. And she was talking about a young lad who just arrived in secondary school whose uh, father, the year before, committed suicide in prison. And it was very hard to get him into the school and to stay in the school um, during the, the day. And she was very worried. And she spoke to the, um, the children's mental health service in that um, part of the country. And they said, not a serious enough case. And they said, and she said, what do you mean? To the CAM service as it was. And they said, well, look, until he's actually harmed himself, we can't intervene. And that is not, that sometimes it's about resources but at least as much as about culture. And too often, profession, uh, some professions can think, well, until, until the symptoms have been presented in direct action, it's too early for us to step in. But actually, you know, every head teacher, every, as you were saying, probation officer knows, that by the time there's actually been a presentation of the harm, then you're too late. And that is actually about leadership as much as about resources, and that's why um, I totally understand the point you've just said. I'll go in reverse um, order. I think it was Nina who asked a question about social services. Ed knows a lot more about this than I did because he obviously was the Secretary of State for three years. I mean, the three things that I think are important from my own experience in Doncaster, which has had a whole series of problems around social services, is first of all, quality of staff, obviously. Uh, secondly, esteem, so that social services and going into social services is seen as a profession with esteem in this country, because I think that is very, very important. And thirdly, something that I worked on when I was at the Cabinet Office, which was the idea of Think Family, which is that whatever the service that, that you're talking about, whether it's the school, the housing office, they are on the lookout in a, in a positive way for signs of problems or trouble in the family. And that the sort of kind of Chinese walls, if you like, are actually very, very unhelpful to kind of getting the early intervention that's required. Um, and Nina, I was just going to say, I think being a social worker now can be a really, really lonely job. Um, and I think the amount of pressure that are on individuals, you know, you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. If you intervene, you take a child into care, you take action, somehow you're a punishment kind of demon figure. If you don't intervene, then it's entirely your fault that a child um, is injured or even worse. And I think there needs to be much more solidarity in the system to support social workers, that it's a collective responsibility, not just of social services, but of the whole system, so that when decisions are taken, some will be right, some will be wrong. But I hate to see, you know, the heavens open in on individual social worker, often with a huge caseload, faced with that kind of pressure, and I think we have a responsibility as a profession to do that. Given what Hazel's just said, I want to follow up directly to Nina as well, because Nina, you're probably the person in this room who knows better than anyone else the answer to the question that you have posed. And part of the job of leadership is to listen to people like you and make sure that we do understand what's actually going on in the lives of the people that you are responsible for. Three things occur to me as being very important. One, we talk about professionalism and we invest in our training systems and then we've got to stand up for the social workers who then uh, deliver for us. I have a principle that I operate in every department I've ever led, which is a presumption of competence. That once you've trained people and appointed them, you should presume they're competent rather than incompetent. I think that's a very important basis of trust to work with anybody. The second thing, and I'm interested to talk to me afterwards if you, but you agree with this or not. It seems to me that one key thing for social workers is for other professionals, be they teachers or other people in the community, to be trained. So that they're able to almost be your eyes and ears in some sort of way. Third, if that's going to work, there's got to be proper partnership. I mean, partnership has become one of those ghastly words that just pops around and if you want to get something, you know, it seemed like over the last ten years, if you want to get something funded, you said it was a partnership model and therefore you got it. But actually, it's a good idea, which is that you do need the various agencies to be working together, including the police, and I think that's an important part of it. So those would be my three uh, reflections. On the social work question, I think, I don't screw with anything anyone else has said about social work, but I would say this, the road to prison 
for many of the young people in Islington and Hackney, to my certain knowledge, starts with educational failure. It was Michael Martineri, who now runs Bernardo's, who said, on the day you permanently exclude a child from school, you might as well give them a date and time to turn up at prison. And one of the things I've done for many years is work on this issue of educational underachievement. Um, as far as social workers are concerned, though, it's, it's easy to criticise social workers. And, you know, we've seen some terrible cases. But, you know, we're, we're reaching a point where politicians have to start to talk about some of the issues of um, society fracturing, the, 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 the dissolving of social networks, dissolving of the sense on some of our estates that I am my brother's keeper. Now, those are not simple answers. Those are not simple questions. They don't have simple answers. But social workers, in the end, can stop an immediate family crisis, but they can't compensate from the way our society has become more atomized and more fractured, and the extended family framework, which helps so many young people in generations past, doesn't function. 